Okay, we're here with Representative Brian King. He is our minority leader, and uh, and I, I would call him like a, an super, honorary the super minority. Uh, okay. you, you insult me, don't do it intentionally. I don't hold it against you, but it's not the minority leader. I am the super minority leader. Okay, okay. it's like a super title. Well, it's the Balding White Guy Caucus. This we're is going to invite you yeah. uh, to be an honorary member of the Balding White Guy Caucus, but then we decided you you have too much hair. Yeah. <laughs> I love that title. Though. You might want to pull it back the, the, just a little bit. <laughs> oh, look, guys, you haven't you haven't investigated my, the top of my head very closely completely. So, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about comprehensive sex education yeah, bill sure. behind HB two fifteen, and we're going to give you you know thirty to sixty seconds to kind of summarize it, and then okay. we've got a couple questions. Yeah, sure. It. Well, uh, the latest polling that we've had on this shows that 64% of Utahns want to have parents with the option to have their kids provided with a more thorough, comprehensive education in human health involving sexuality. And uh, so what the bill would do is basically allow them to opt into a curriculum that teaches about the elements for what constitutes a healthy relationship, what will promote a healthy relationship, things like boundary setting, resisting peer pressure, uh, the benefits of delaying initiation of sexual relationships. Uh, contraception will undoubtedly will be talked about rather explicitly in terms of we want to be able to reach kids who have made the decision wrongly or rightly that they want to have sex, that they're going to have sex, that are having sex in terms of talking to them to let them know how they can avoid sexually transmitted infections because we've got chlamydia and gonorrhea rates are skyrocketing. This is a pretty heavy issue. Yeah, I mean, it's no, a, absolutely. It's this a big is a serious issue. I have, I have a serious question. So in, in the contents of the bill, some, some of the committee members have the impression that uh, you know, we're going to be teaching fourth graders about oral sex and some, yeah, you know, that's, just... That's unfortunate. The bill requires that all teaching be age appropriate, that it be evidence based. And look, some people have said, I, I got the title, I am completely and totally evil on Facebook. Do you, do, I, do you dispute that? Well, I want to, I'm, I'm sad that it has come out so Complete, so 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 openly that I am completely and totally evil. I mean, you guys <laughs> know it because you work with me here. Right. But I'm hoping that the general public doesn't find out. Okay. Seriously, Allison and I have four daughters. Uh, they're, our youngest is 19 now, but we raised them. We're active LDS. We raised them in the faith, and we raised them to delay the initiation of their sexual activities until they were married. Now, I, I think they've done that, quite honestly. I hope they've done that. But... The reality is that a lot of kids, number one, aren't going to do that. And number two, a lot of parents, this is the parent's primary responsibility. There's no doubt about it. I, I regret that we have to have the schools do it. But what, the reality is that the parents don't do it. What do you say to those parents that are concerned that really this is the school, whether you, you want to or not, you know, invariably they're injecting values or biases or whatever into the education of their children, the way they're really concerned about Yeah, it. sure. No, I say two things. Number one is... Please accept the reality that if we don't deal with increasing rates of uh, venereal disease, sexually transmitted infections, we're going to have a public health crisis. Are those among youth or adults? That's among, primarily, it's both, but the highest rates increase are among our youth, eight, 15 to 25 year olds. The other thing I would say is this um, on, on that kind of issue, and that it, it's let, let parents, empower parents and their children in a way that the parents feel is best. If you don't want to opt in, don't opt in. One, one of the things that we did in the second substance so is... only an opt-in? Yes. We, and we left, as the default, uh, the kind of opt-in that we currently have right now. You have to opt-in to abstinence only, too. But we left intact everything that's in current law about abstinence only or abstinence-based. So people that are uncomfortable with a more comprehensive approach to human health involving sexuality, look, they don't have to opt into that. They can opt into abstinence only or abstinence-based, and they will get exactly what kids are getting right now. Brian, thank you. I, 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 you know, our viewers uh, in the Balding White Guy Caucus aren't used to watching more than maybe four minutes of videos, so, um, so I'm going to cut this a little short, but I do have some follow-up questions. So, uh, how do you feel Justin, about you were on the committee yesterday. Yes, I was. You yeah. heard the, the entire thing. We were there for four hours, yeah. literally, yeah. most of which was talking about this bill. I thought we had a great discussion. There were many, many people coming in and oh, yeah. supporting the bills. Many, many a, people opposed. It was, it was a very civil. emotional committee also. Yeah. A lot of people there who had experienced you know, sexual assault and um, on both sides of the issue, frankly. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, how do you feel about not being able to pass a bill because you're a Democrat? <laughs> These are kind of hard law questions. This is brutal. So, it, 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 this it stuff is brutal. <laughs> Just a follow up to that. Uh, I mean, it, it, does it make you want to change your party affiliation? <laughs> I actually brought.
brought the floor. All right. I, I wanted, I wanted to fill it thank out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So balding white guy caucus, I can see. The reason that it's named the way it is, there's a healthy dose of humor here, which I appreciate. <laughs> Uh, well, no, no. in all seriousness, there is an element of head banging against the wall. Absolutely. Being a Democrat in totally the state legislature. That. But I'll tell sure. you this, and you guys know this, because I've worked with both of you on various things. We work together well, on, and we try and find common ground, and there are stuff that we dis things that we disagree about. This is one of them, of course, yesterday, because that vote failed, that bill failed on a party line vote. Yeah. But there's an awful lot of stuff that we find common ground with and that we can work together on, and that we do every day. What people, your viewers, may not realize is that the great majority of bills that pass the Utah State Legislature are bipartisan passed, and That's there's true. not a real healthy big split between R's and D's on those bills. That's true. And that we can get along as people even if we disagree on the issues. Which, That's right. As we often do. That's right. So, Brian, what do you think about um, elephants carrying cancer and really donkeys not carrying anything? <laughs> is that true? Yeah. I thought we that it was just the opposite. The I thought that elephants had this stuff that fended off cancer. And donkeys, of course, are loathsome creatures. I, th I can't believe <laughs> no, you true. guys. That's what he said. Elephants. <laughs> elephants. You said it the other way. No, no. You elephants. You said cancer. elephants carry cancer. No, no, no. They like cure cancer. Elephants yeah, yeah, cure yeah. cancer. Oh, yeah, donkeys no, don't really do anything. Know. I just wondered how you feel about that. Well, or... I'll tell you this. Here's the thing. If anybody thinks that that elephants in the real animal world are less intelligent than donkeys, they have not studied elephants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was nice. No, it's true. That was, that was no, great. I appreciate that. I am, hey, I am a Democrat. <laughs> I'm committed to being fact-based, <laughs> unlike my Republican well, friends. Elephants do cure cancer, so I just, you know, I just, I'll just put okay, that I'm, right there for you. Thank you, and because I'm, I'm almost at the level of frustration that I think, hey, why not, uh, sure. if you can't beat them, join them. Right. I totally, well, yeah. We do that. We try to share members of the caucus all the time. We take them aside. We well, I think waterboard them. <laughs> so, what, what are you guys actually doing, caucus? <laughs> I mean, I think it's a big secret. We have to a me. big. I know it's we have a big open. dartboard. Yeah. And we lock the doors and we put numbers up. Everybody chooses a place, and then I mean, there's a lot of money that changes. Hands. If they do oh, that in caucus, oh. maybe I need to sign up for that caucus. It's a little more interesting. <laughs> How are your lunches? Are they better? Are, no, it's the same lunch. Oh, okay. Right. It's the same lunch. Can't beat you there. Okay. And then, uh, can you give us your best impression of Donald Trump? Oh, listen. I you know I actually had an impression of Donald Trump that I did last year for our fundraiser breakfast yeah. for the house, but I haven't thought about it, and so I, I don't want to do it. Other than to say, you know, I get Donald Trump, Trump tweets, notification of them. He is becoming more and more unhinged as time goes on. And look, you guys have, I mean, I love you guys, and I don't know many Republicans that aren't concerned about this. The guy is, is really not reflective of what a normal person would be doing in the White House. Hmm. Disruptive. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right. That's the most euphemistic thing you can say about him. Come on, that's a, no, that's, that's a the most position. <laughs> yeah, disruptive. Well, disruptive. It's, it's funny though to see. I really do have sympathy for my Republican friends who have to distance themselves from Donald in many ways. I mean, the guy is everything we teach our kids not to be in terms of, you know, personality and values <laughs> and behavior. And yet he is a Republican, and so I didn't. I love uh, Todd Weiler is the best at this. I didn't vote for him, but everything that Todd, that, that Trump does, he seeks to defend in one way or the other. <laughs> well, you guys I, don't do that. No. Uh, what, we're not taking an official position no, as the Balding White Guy Caucus, but um, <laughs> I, we're officially that. neutral. We're caucus officially caucus disruptive on Trump. Yeah, we're we're, we're neutral. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, as time goes on, you're going to become more disruptive. It's, be, it's because of it. He has hair, so yeah, it, he doesn't really fit in the caucus. Well, the so we're angle. overawed. No, right. no, the envy angle. It's an ugly emotion, but I get it, you know. Yeah. But but keep in mind, I'm very convinced that if we saw him in his natural state. He would be a very comfortable member of the Balding White Guy Caucus. <laughs> I mean, don't you think? He's had some help. It's like, let's just say this. Yeah. Augmentation is not just for women. <laughs> oh, no. Brian just went there. So, uh, just in closing, <laughs> video edit. in closing, I'm wondering if you'll just sign our guest list. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, we yeah, take it all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. Right, thanks. Appreciate it.